don't know. There's an awful lot of stuff here I guess I don't understand. Me too. Books are all complicated. Hey, Corey, maybe we could ask your mom. But she's a girl. Ask her anyway. Ask me what, fellas? Go on, Corey. Ask her. Of course. What are mothers for? Well, it's just that Richard and some guys were talking at school today, and he was telling them about, well... About what? About how babies are made. Oh, boy. Can you explain it to us, Mrs. Baker? You do know, don't you? Yes, Earl. I believe I do. Well? Well, it's something I think we'd better discuss after dinner. It might take a little time. But after dinner, I'll be downstairs in my house. Exactly, Earl. And then you can ask your mother to explain it to you. Okay, buddy. Now, where were we? You were going to explain to me how babies get made. Right. Now, let's see. Well, to begin with... I'll go. Hi, Corey. Here comes Sarah. Cousin Sarah. Our own fantastic self in person. Oh, and how I missed you both. Oh, we oh. missed you too. When did you get here? Just an hour ago. I came straight here from the airport. And am I exhausted? Tell us all about India. And did you bring me any? Yes, I did. And yes, I will, Corey. And tell us, how did the picture turn out? Oh, crabble, as the French say. <laughs> oh, look, look, let's sit down, and I'll give you both a first-person, play-by-play report of the whole wild scene. I'll start the coffee, and you start talking. I haven't stopped. Well, anyway, two short months ago, when your most fascinating living relative arrived in Bombay on location with her fiancé, the one, the only Clyde Porter, to make to see a flick, well, I was only a simple but talented country girl from Kansas about to play her first part in a really big cinema. We've heard the commercial, Sarah. Now get to the travelogue. Yeah, I want to hear about India and the tigers and snakes and stuff. You want to hear about snakes? I'll tell you about snakes. Once, when we were getting ready for a shot deep in the jungle, I turned around just as a great big cobra came slithering down a tree. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I liked to have died right there. And I let out this yell that you could have heard. And then, just as Clyde and I were getting on the plane to come home, we found out that an elephant, an elephant, had knocked down our camera tent and stomped our last four days' work at the mandolin picks. So we had to go back and shoot it all over again. Kel pain in the neck. Gee, I sure wish I could have been there with you. Oh, me too, little cuz. You would have had a ball. But what about you and Clyde? I mean, when is the wedding? Well, now, there's something that you and I have got to talk about, Julia. Clyde and I had a real heavy heart-to-heart -heart about the wedding on the plane coming back, and he agreed with me, so it's all settled. What is? That you're going to give the wedding. <laughs> me? Well, what on earth have I got to do with Mom? What is it, Corey? If you and Cousin Sarah are going to talk about gooshy stuff like weddings, I think I'll go do my homework. I wish you would, because Cousin Sarah and I seem to have a lot of gooshy stuff we have to straighten out between ourselves. Uh, see you later, little cause. Me too. And I'm really glad you're back, Cousin Sarah. And don't forget my present. <laughs> He's quite a fellow, that son of yours. Never mind, Corey, just now. Let's get back to how I suddenly got in the middle of your marriage to Clyde Porter. Well, it's simple, Julia. Isn't it customary for the bride's family to give the wedding? Well, yes, And you but... and Corey are all the family I have, at least in California. So, who else is there? But, Sarah, this wedding is going to be a big thing. I mean, Clyde Porter is a rich, famous, important man. He can't get married like just, well, well like just anybody. But that's the whole point, don't you see, Cos? It's just because he is Clyde Porter that you've just got to do this for me. I mean, I just can't go to him like some, some orphan or something. After all, I've got my pride. And if I'm going to be his wife, we just got to get married properly. Oh, Julia, when you and Walt got married, it was done right, wasn't it? Well, yes. And isn't that memory something very important to you now? It certainly is. Well, then say you'll help me now, dearest cause. I don't seem to have much choice, do I, Sarah? Oh, Julia. Julia, I can't tell you how happy you made me. Sarah, 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 I hate to intrude on the sentimentality of all this, but I really have a very important question to ask you. How are we supposed to pay for this wedding? Oh, that's no problem. Clyde's going to lend me whatever we need. He's going to lend you the money? Sure. Then after we're married, I'll pay him back out of the allowance he's going to give me. 
Just a moment. Come in. Doctor, your mail. Oh. Bills. Bills and ads. No wonder the post office is going broke. Will there be anything else, Doctor? No. I mean, uh, yes. Uh, oh, I, I don't know. Surely there, there must be something that needs doing around here. I feel so useless. But this lull won't last, Doctor. It never does. In the meantime, why don't you take the afternoon off and play a little golf? Well, thanks for the suggestion. I feel retired enough as it is. Oh, I wish I had your problem. Arranging for Sarah's wedding is likely to drive me out of my mind without any help from our normal workload. Well, the way I feel, I'd swap you even right now. Oh, don't tempt me, Doctor. Don't tempt me. <laughs> something anything buddy what's on your mind can you tell us how babies get made oh brother you do know don't you of course i do i'm not a kid then tell us about it well i can but i think it's something you better ask your mothers about why well i'm afraid you better ask them about that too about what about why i can't tell you about why i can't tell you how about your first question huh? Come on now, fellas, let's break this up. I've got a lot of work to do. Oh, gee. Hey, I got an idea. Let's go downstairs and wait for my dad to come home. Maybe we can get him to tell us. You want a bet? Anything happened while I was gone? Mmm, I had one small splitter. You had 11 phone calls. Oh. Here. One florist, two caterers, a bakery, a printer, and four gossip columnists. Oh, dear. How did they all find out so quickly that I'm arranging the wedding? Oh, and there were two urgent calls from some clown named Sam Stone. That's Clyde Porter's personal manager. The man is hypertense, if you ask me. Dr. Chegley, are you so desperate for patients that you are now making diagnoses by telephone? Hmm. Oh, thank you, Miss Danbury. Good night. Oh, Sarah and her simple wedding are going to drive me right out of my mind. You want to tell me about it now, Ma? About the wedding? No, how babies get made. Oh, that's right, Corey. We never did finish our conversation, did we? I don't think we ever even started it. But we could now, couldn't we? Well, the only problem is that I'm expecting someone momentarily. I think you just don't want to tell me, just like everybody else. What do you mean by that, son? Roberta told me to ask you, and L.J. Wagoner's dad said he had to talk to L.J. Wagoner's mom first. If you grown-ups don't want to tell us kids anything, then why don't you just say so? But it's not that. It's not that at all. As a matter of fact, as soon as my guest leaves... Oh, there. That must be him now. Then I guess I'll just go ahead and do my homework again. And I promise I won't forget about it later. Mrs. Baker, I am Sam Stone, and it is a real pleasure to meet you. May we come in? Of course you may. I must confess I wasn't expecting a delegation. Allow me to present Mel Sharp, Clyde Porter's business manager. How do you do? How do you do? Gus Anderson, Clyde's lawyer. How do you do? How do you do? Danny Wilson is press agent. Oh, how do Miss you Baker? do? Miss Baker? Uh, why don't you all sit down? Uh, maybe we should get right to the problem, Sam. Problem? You make that plural. Yes. You see, Mrs. Baker, a man like Clyde Porter can't get married like, like, like... Just, uh, anybody? Exactly. Shall we get down to specifics, gentlemen? Now, to begin with, Mrs. Baker... Don't forget the tax problem, Sam. I won't, Mel. Just relax. Count, it's never relaxed. <laughs> You see, Mrs. Baker, for a man in Clyde Potter's position, there are many factors to be taken into consideration. Professional commitments, publicity coverage, guest lists, selection of site for a honeymoon, entertainment of guests at a reception, to say nothing of tax problems. Sarah said that she and Clyde would like to have a very simple ceremony. <laughs> My dear Mrs. Baker, that is exactly why we are here to make things simple. Right, gentlemen? Right. right. 
As simple as the tax problems will allow. Yes. Now, what size reception did you have in mind? I don't know. I thought uh, the immediate family and perhaps a few close friends. A few close friends? My dear Mrs. Baker, not counting the press. Oh, Clyde is very big with the press. He's very popular. Numero uno. And aside from the press, Clyde Porter has at least four or five hundred close friends. Four or five hundred? Who absolutely must be present at the ceremony. Without counting the press. Or considering his tax problem. Right. Now, the way we have this worked out, Mrs. Baker, I think the first thing to do is set the date. After that, we can proceed to concretize all the divergent elements we've mentioned into one coordinated We cover all the bases, as they say. The wedding should come off with a minimum of difficulty for all concerned. Well, I wouldn't want to bet on it. <laughs> well, I think that's enough for the first meeting. You have your work cut out for you, I'll say that. I'd say that, too. And don't forget to keep in touch. Let's all of us keep in touch, right? Right! right. right. After all, that's what we're around for. Shall we, gentlemen? Good night, Mrs. Baker. Oh, good night. Mrs. Baker? Good night, good night Mrs. Baker. Oh, good night. Very, 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 very nice session. Nice. 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 Thank you. Very oh, nice. I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was a wonderful... Is it okay now, Mom? Is what okay? You said you'd tell me all about it after those men left. That's right, I did. All right, come over here. Let's sit down. We'll take a whack at it. Well, let's see. To begin with, Corey, you understand, there are two sexes, male and female. They're like boys and girls, only older. Right. Now, the next part is a little more complicated. You see... Oh, who on earth could that be? Let's don't go see. Let's do. <laughs> Hi, little cuz. It's cousin Sarah again. Julia, I've got to talk to you. I've got to talk to you, too, Sarah. I guess I'll go do some more homework. <laughs> Sarah, I just finished a session with your fiancé's entourage that I still don't believe. Do you have any idea what this simple wedding of yours is going to involve? Don't trouble yourself about it, Julia. There isn't going to be any wedding. Oh, good. What do you mean, good? Well, nothing. Just tell me what happened. Well, it's all because of this picture that Clyde and I made in India. I only had a small part, of course, Julia, but what a part it was. Oh, there was this one scene where I'm dying of fever after this big flood, and Clyde is going to try and find a doctor, and I'm lying in this hot delirious and I keep reliving our entire relationship. Lionel, 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 where are you? I can see the lights on the water and I hear the music play, but I can't find you, Lionel. Lionel, oh, Lionel. This is Sarah, that's all terribly moving. But what does that have to do with why there isn't going to be any wedding? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you, Julia. This afternoon, Clyde confessed to me. Confessed what? He's cutting that scene out of the picture. For oh, goodness, is that why the marriage is off? Oh, well, you are not in the theater. You wouldn't understand. I mean, how could I marry a man who could do something like that to me and still keep my self-respect? And that's exactly what I told him when I gave him back his rent. You didn't. You don't agree with me? I agree with you? I think you're out of your mind. But, but, but nothing, Sarah. I certainly don't know anything about the theater. And I don't know what reasons Clyde had for cutting your scenes. But I do know this. I know that he's a good man and that he loves you. Oh, you. You think so? Sarah, when you left, what must have been a purely professional judgment affect your personal relationship with Clyde, then you demean yourself as well as that relationship. Oh, gee. <laughs> well... Well, I guess I did overreact. Just a touch. Just a touch? Oh, and the things I said to him. Oh, Julia, what am I going to do? What can I say to him now? Well, you'll think of something, if you really want to. I wouldn't even know how to start. Oh, gee, cuz, could you talk to him for me? Not a chance. I'll handle the wedding. But you have to take care of the marriage yourself. But I'd mess it up. I know I would. No, you won't. Now, just listen to me, and between us, we'll work it out right now. I'll listen. I'll listen. Yes, that's right, Mr. Stone. As of 2 a.m. this morning, the wedding was officially back on. Right. No, I haven't decided on the reception menu yet. I am still working on the guest list, Mr. Stone. I promise, I promise I will keep you advised. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. About everything. Yes, that's right, Mr. Stone. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Mrs. 
Roberta. I'm just finishing up. Where is Gory? He and Earl are in his room. Been mighty quiet all afternoon. Did you talk to him last night? No, unfortunately, we never got to it. Oh, I guess that's what they're brooding about. Well, he won't have to brood much longer. I'm going to take care of that right now. Corey! Corey Baker! Come out here, darling. I want to talk to you. My mom, is anything wrong? Did I do something? There certainly is, and no, you didn't. It's my fault. Last night, you and I started... Oh, no. Now what? Hi. Listen, Julia, messenger left this for you this morning. It's supposed to be the tentative guest list for Sarah's wedding. And she called, and she asked me Listen, to tell you that hold she it, was... Hold it, hold it, Marie. Just hold it. For once, Sarah's wedding is going to have to wait. For two days, my son has been waiting for me to explain to him how babies are made. And nothing, I repeat, nothing is going to stop me from taking care of that little matter right now. Gee, Mom, can Rosie Wagner and Stan listen, too? Yeah, can I? Is it okay if I stay, too? Rosie <laughs> Wagador, you already have two children. What could I possibly tell you that you don't already know? That's what I want to find out. <laughs> me, too. After all, someday I might be a mother myself, and I'd like to see how you handle this. Then everybody come over here and sit down. Don't interrupt. Now... To begin with, boys, you understand. Oh, I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. Come in. Julia, you'll never guess what Sarah, I just... Sarah, 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 not one single word. Now, just sit down and listen. You might even learn something useful. Now, if that doorbell rings again, nobody moves. You got it? All right. Now, to begin with, boys, you should understand that the creation of life is a very natural, very beautiful part of living itself. And every living thing, whether it's flowers or birds or fish or people, has its own special way of creating life. For people, ideally, it begins with love. Of course, there are many different kinds of love in the world. But what I'm going to tell you about now is... That's really all there is to it, fellas. That's how babies get made. And that's how we all came to be here in the first place. Oh, Julia. That was simply beautiful. The whole thing sounds too complicated for me. I think I'll just be a dentist. <laughs> Thanks anyway for telling us, Mom. Come on, O.J. Wagadorn. Let's go watch your TV. That's funny. It didn't seem to make any impression on them at all. With children, what you don't tell them frequently gets blown up all out of proportion. That's so true. And they're very young. They have plenty of time to get interested for real. <laughs> well, maybe they do, but I sure don't. Julia, about the wedding, we got a big problem. What now? Well, according to the astrology chart in today's paper, it isn't safe for a Capricorn to marry a Sagittarius <laughs> on a Saturday. <laughs> He can't. Next Monday is the best I can do. That's right. Nurse, call the hospital on that Anderson case. Set up a special GI series. And also, you'd better call your house and mine and tell them that we'll be working late tonight. Mm. I don't know how we're going to cope with all this activity. Why does everybody have to get sick at once? Yes, Doctor. Now, don't forget, Miss Lomar's an X-ray. You know, <laughs> it's a lucky thing for the both of us that your cousin and Clyde Porter decided to elope at the last moment. I guess so. As a woman, I'm a little disappointed, but as the cousin of the bride, I couldn't be more happy. No, Becky, <laughs> you've been working for me too long. You're getting to be just as sentimental as I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, Doctor, don't forget your patience. Ah, yes, yes. Sarah! Sarah, what on earth are you doing here? You're supposed to be in Acapulco, incognito. Acapulco, Mexico. Oh, <laughs> Clyde and I are leaving in an hour, but I just had to see you first to tell you how unbelievably happy I am. Oh, Sarah, that's wonderful. <laughs> but there's just one little thing, though. Oh? Well, after the ceremony in Las Vegas yesterday, Clyde and I got to talking, and the poor dear, he feels terribly guilty about the fact that we didn't have a proper wedding, so... Oh, no. So while we're on our honeymoon, Clyde and I would like you to get everything arranged so that when we get back, we can get married all over again, just as we originally planned. Now, isn't that a beautiful idea? It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Now, the way I see it, cuz, you just absolutely gotta make this the wedding of a century, because by the time... Hey, say, listen, do you think maybe we could get it televised? 